um, things like quick start guides or sample code and things like this that are available to our customers. So you can reach me at sy at proax.ca for that. So a quick mention about Proax. Uh, of course, Proax is national all across Canada with lots of locations. We're certainly growing with 180 plus employees. And uh, I'm part of the technical support team at Proax. So we provide online support uh, electronically and in person or uh, through seminars like this. And we do uh, carry aside from Omron and a bunch of other quality products and lines. So as part of the technical team, um, what we basically do is we do application engineering. We have uh, labs, uh, the main one being in Oakville, as you see in the picture. We do have uh, training classrooms in a number of our locations. We like to do proof of concepts for clients. Uh, basically, early on in a project, we will do something like that to try to take some of the guesswork uh, out of the application and make the, make the customer more comfortable about uh, what they're looking at. And we do as well uh, technical product training. So today's um, presentation is SysMac in a day HMI. So the SysMac uh, platform from Omron, as you know, and you see in the picture is a very extensive platform. It uh, has basically seven technologies integrated into it, which I believe is the most of any automation platform in the world. So um, right you know, today we're talking about the HMI portion. On our last session, we talked about the PLC, which is really the heart or the beginnings of the whole SysMac system. There is, of course, uh, motion control, vision, safety, uh, robotics, and uh, sensors, and a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, recently with the SysMac platform, they've added the uh, new NX1P and newer than that is NX1, we talked about uh, in the last uh, Friday session. So with the NX1P being the entry level model to the SysMac PLCs, this one is extremely popular and, we, and I like to say that it sells like hotcakes, it's doing really well. And so with it being part of this greater platform, we want to expand and take advantage of the other technologies. So today is HMI, which is one of the closest cousins to the PLC. But again, we have uh, vision and we have um, safety, motion, and all that stuff. And the software that goes along with the SysMac platform is SysMac Studio. So you can see a bit of a picture of it to the right, and we're definitely going to get more into that. So for HMIs, um, at the beginning, we want to talk about applications. So normally, you're going to have a project, whether it be a packaging machine or extruder machine or something like this. Um, basically anywhere you see a PLC, there's an opportunity to have an HMI. And of course, there are other HMIs in the market other than Omron, but we're gonna try today to talk about uh, the value of having both Omron or the um, convenience of having both from the same vendor, which is part of the whole SysMac selling uh, strategy. So also uh, temperature controls and VFDs is a little less popular. Um, you can use a, a HMI directly with that in some applications, and sometimes you don't really need a PLC. Uh, mainly Omron offers touchscreen, but there are a few function key models there. And um, uh, recently I've uh, been doing a bit of experimentation with the remote connections. So as we'll see, Basically every series that Almron offers has remote connection, and we'll get into a little bit more about what that is and what, can it, what it can do. But lately with the um, isolation of people and the COVID crisis, it's become apparent that we can use the remote connection to have access to an HMI and separate two operators or, or more people. So we'll get into that a little bit more later, um, how and why, but uh, this is something to take note of right away because it could be advantageous. So first of all, we'll talk about the NAHMI uh, connections. So this is how do you connect to the system and how do we program it and all that stuff. So the conventional uh, picture we're seeing in the middle of the screen shows a computer with SysMac Studio. We can program on USB to the NAHMI and we can also program across Ethernet. The HMIs are exclusively DC, so we would sell a power supply 
uh, it would be more of a series like S8VK nowadays. There's a budget one and an ordinary uh, general purpose S8VK power supply. Um, as a matter of fact, they even have power supplies now with EIP built in such that you can monitor uh, through a network the status of the power supply so that it would be for critical applications. Um, so yeah, we're showing it here with an NJ, which is more traditional SysMac from the uh, original release in 2011. Um, just a quick note on that. When NJ was first released, there was no NAHMI yet. And at the time they used their current screen called the NS. So we'll talk about it because it's still around and still viable. And uh, one of the series from Omron. But the, the NA is the uh, forefront and the leader. So towards the bottom of your screen, you see a few more pictures. There's um, the bottom left is an NAHMI taking advantage of this VNC. So the VNC is basically the remote connection, or this stands for virtual network computing. So originally it's designed for two PCs to talk to one another, but um, the NAHMI is acting uh, like a computer with the, having the VNC built in. So what is on the screen of the NAHMI can be, and you see in the picture, on a smartphone, a tablet, a desktop, or a PC a laptop. So not only can you see what's on the screen, but you can operate the HMI. So if you were to, if you see the guy on the bottom right, if you were to press on your screen on your smartphone, it will actually detent a button on the actual touch screen uh, as if someone were pressing it, but virtually, and therefore operate the machine. So this can be a little bit dangerous, so word of caution with that, but it allows us to have this social distancing, which could be a, a health safety thing. And another interesting thing about it is, normally when we think of VNC, you think about uh, networks that have been put in by the customer in IT. I found that you can just take any old Wi-Fi router, connect it up to the uh, NAHMI, and create your own Wi-Fi hotspot. And if you do that, you can then connect, uh, like you see with the smartphone there, without involving IT or anybody for, basically I could use a $39 uh, unit from Walmart, but of course, we would recommend in the industrial environment to use something more like a Phoenix contact wireless ethernet switch. So if you just set it up in a um, hotspot mode, then you can create this uh, remote connection locally. So moving over to the NS. So as I said, NS, uh, it's been around, I think, since the year 2000, so it's a long time, but it's extremely user-friendly and extremely well installed in the field. So a lot of people have used it. A lot of people are very familiar with it. Um, before I forget, its program was CX Designer, which is a, a different software. So there's um, that to consider. Um, it does support what's called an end-to-end -end connection very well. So shown in the middle picture there, we have two NS screens and three controllers uh, NJ. So any of these devices can talk to anybody unlike the traditional connections where you have like one to one or something like that one plc to one hmi in the m to n connection anything can talk to anything so that's very powerful and flexible and then the personal computer in the middle can program uh, the screens and the plc uh, being plugged into the network and as we said earlier you'd need cx designer for the screens and you use sysmac studio for the nj or nx's uh, that would be there and another thing to mention about the NS that um, is shown down below, there's uh, serial ports on it and they can talk to devices like temperature controls, frequency drives and stuff like that, like that directly with uh, what's called smart active parts. And also something the NS does that the NA does not do is multi-vendor support. So we can uh, connect mainly through serial to uh, Siemens and Mitsubishi and third-party PLCs. So in the case where it's a third-party PLC and they don't have a screen they're happy with, then we can possibly uh, get in there. What we really like to do with that is put the multi-vendor Omron screen in there and then eventually pick up that PLC business if we can. So last but not least, we'll talk about the NB connections. So the NB HMI is an economy screen it comes in a 01 advanced model with Ethernet or a 00 serial only model uh, for the most part. And um, so yeah, it's economy, it's, it's uh, very, very popular because 
it's uh, let's say more than two times less expensive than the other ones we just talked about but of course it is a uh, is limited not quite the same type of machine so talking about the connections it has uh, either an ethernet port built in or that's omitted for uh, you know a, a lower price you get serial only the ethernet can connect to 32 plcs um, Omron likes to advertise that it's a best match to to have CP1 PLCs with NBHMI, and that makes sense. But the truth is, when we look at this, we can hook the um, NBHMI up to any uh, PLC that Omron has, provided it's a, an Ethernet model. So that means it's quite uh, wide, widespread in, in its use. So quickly looking at the other ports, we have a USB uh, to plug into a PIC uh, bridge printer or for programming. We have a USB memory stick, which is kind of a, um, a more convenient thing because some of the past HMIs were using compact flash. Um, the serial port you can connect to uh, RS-232 one-to-one -to, -one to a PLC. Um, that could be pretty much any PLC from Omron and some multi-vendor. The COM2 serial port is 232, 42, or 485. So you can have a 485 multi-drop serial network uh, to PLCs, but that kind of thing is moving away because we have ethernet now. So it's not very popular, but for backwards uh, compatibility support. And then another cool thing that it does at the bottom of the page, you can have an NBHMI and use port two and talk mud bus out that port two directly to temperature controls or frequency drives. And just recently I worked on um, talking Modbus to a robot controller. So this is again using an HMI without a PLC in the middle, just basically to save money. So uh, in our last session, um, last Friday, we talked a lot about NX1 uh, and NX1P, the NX1 being the newest one. And basically where the HMI is concerned, uh, as we said so far, we can use any HMI from Omron that has ethernet support. But in particular, we would wanna marry this NX102 up with the NA HMI because they're both SysMax to get the most uh, functionality and power out of it. So uh, if we look at this PLC, one of the big things we said about it last week, it has two ethernet IP ports. And this is great because uh, we, we found on the smaller NX1P2 that it is possible to overload a single Ethernet IP port because on there we may have programming with SysMax Studio, we may have robots, we may have HMIs and IOs and stuff like that. We also said last week that we really strive to put all the IO on, in uh, NX102 on EtherCAT because we have synchronized performance and plug and play functionality. So it's by far the best for us to put the IO and the servos and so on on EtherCAT. However, sometimes we have devices we wanna put on EIP. So the NX102, uh, one of the great features is the two ports. Um, in this case, port one is default 192.168.250.1. So I will set the screen up or actually my software will default my uh, IP address to 192.168.250.2. So we'll see a bit about that later. But when I create an NA project inside the studio, it will assume that I have dot one for the uh, PLC and dot two will be the HMI. So uh, that means that the port two in this case is completely wide open. Its default is the same, but dot two five one. And that might be going to an SQL server or it might be going to an OPC UA device. But the idea is there's a whole separate port reserved for SCADA or other things. So uh, the NX1P is a single Ethernet IP port and a single EtherCAT port. And remember, the HMI cannot connect to the EtherCAT uh, absolutely whatsoever. And the reason for that is that the EtherCAT is preserved for uh, high frequency, low size packets, which is, lends itself best to I.O. and allows the performance to be there by doing so. So that means that we put the HMI or information type devices or programming on the EIP port, and that's just to get performance out of the overall system. So that's how the SysMac system is designed. 
So looking closer at the um, Ethernet IP port for the NX1P, um, it's the upper port. We have a little switch on there. We have uh, NAHMI connected there. Um, now, this is what we're talking about before loading this single port up so heavily. This isn't too bad what we're looking at here, but we've seen applications with you know, 20, 30 nodes on there and it can get really, really busy and bogged down. So the NX1P on there, uh, talking to the, the uh, other NX1P, this is where we talk peer to peer, or we call it data link for short. So at the EIP deterministic speed, it will be sharing data from one PLC to the other. So this is very good for coordinating two different processes. And on the same port, we have the NAHMI. And then a whole bunch of other devices we show that talk EIP. So just a real quick mention that for serial or legacy type stuff, we have on the NX1P, we have these optional boards that you can stick in there. So you'll get 232, 422, 485. We can talk to uh, a legacy HMI with um, uh, serial, this would be like an older NT screen or something like this. We can talk to Omron's MX2 inverter or the RX V1 and the C series family of temperature control um, can also talk on a serial connection. So when it comes to programming, there's one little thing I want to draw to your attention that um, in, for example, the NX1P, there is a thing called memory setting for CJ series units. And what this is, is you're basically just enabling a CJ memory map that lives inside the SysMac PLC for free. And the reason we do this is for legacy support or, th or other things that we refer to as FINS devices. And an example of this, to see where we're going with this, it would be the NBHMI. The NBHMI is not a true tag HMI, tag-based HMI like the NA is, and we'll need these addresses in order for it to operate. So basically, when you start off your PLC project under controller settings, we come into this, all you wanna do is check these on because the default is off. Incidentally, if you have an NJ series CPU, you don't have to do this setting, it's always in there no matter what you do. So once that setting is made, then when you're, um, in your global variables, you're able to do this AT or address translation and put in here an address. Now, this looks like extra work, which is a, it is a bit. However, when you go to the touchscreen program, you use this exact address for whatever it is. So for example, if I make a push button, and in this case, um, I wanna turn on this select, it will be H4.00 in the, in the screen program. And here, percent H400 just basically connects it to that address. Therefore, when I push the touch screen button, this tag will be affected. And if we look down here at the ladder program, it will do whatever it's supposed to do. Um, another note, uh, we touched on this last week, but we can't uh, not mention this, is that every time we're using the NXIO, which is something that comes with the Systemic platform, there is two different powers in the bus, what we call the NX bus. There is the unit power and then there's the IO power. And we just want to mention that these must be isolated and with separate power supplies so we can avoid noise. And on this topic, when you're doing HMIs, the HMI should be on the UVUG circuit, is one up here. So this one up here is for high impedance internal devices that you want to protect. And the IO power actually goes into the field to solenoids and to switches and proxies and things coupled back to here. And you do not want it and all its noise and inductive problems being uh, affected to the circuit above. So the HMI would either go into the above circuit or have a whole nother power supply de dedicated just for the HMI. Okay, so we're gonna look at the uh, products themselves quickly. So again, there's uh, three families. There is the NA, the NS, and the NB. And I like this picture here because it shows them all at once. So we go all the way from the NB3, which I would say roughly the NB series are about, uh, uh, let's say about 100 bucks an inch. So let's say 300 bucks to around about 1,000 bucks for 
three, five, seven, and 10 inch sizes. Then the NS series is a legacy product. Like I say, it's still available, still current, and has some really nice attributes about it, but is, is being gradually moved away from. And the upcoming star is the NE series where selling more of these and they're becoming more popular. And they're also undergoing revision changes and enhancements uh, basically as we speak. So basically uh, further to the right, you would say is, is more performance and further up on the left uh, on the Y axis is going to be cost, just to give you an idea. Uh, so really I can narrow it down for you because maybe if you look at it, there's quite a few of them. I would say, in the NB series, the NB7 is the hot ticket because it has a much higher resolution than the 5 and is less than 100 bucks differential between a 5 and a 7. So I would say that, that the hot spot there is a 7 and the 10 is a bonus. Moving up into the NSs, I, I like the 8 inch screen because it's uh, significantly, uh, it's got good resolution and it is significantly larger than the 5. The five has, I believe, 320 by 240 resolution, which is not very great. So I wouldn't spend too much time with that one unless you have an exact fit for it. So a lot of the activity is here. Then when we get into our um, NA series HMIs, excuse me, sorry. Um, the uh, hot spot would be the nine inch. Um, the seven is okay, but it's a little on the small side. So the nine inches is where I like to start. Then perhaps the 12, the 15 in all of the cases is kind of usually what we call a trade show model. It's if you're building a machine to show off or it's a really big fancy machine, then you can have the big screen. So <clears throat> the a few more details about the NB. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's compact and it's um, light. It has a very, um, you know, uh, light power requirement in terms of watts to run it. Um, it says easy to use, I would say fairly easy to use. This is because normally you're doing a simple operator interface with it. The advanced things like uh, data logging and um, recipes and all this stuff, I would, you know, defer you to either an NS or preferably an NA screen. So uh, it has serial or ethernet support. We mentioned that before, there's an advance in a basic model. Um, with things like, I would do alarms in it. It can actually do NB web. And recently, one of my colleagues at Proax found out that it has a hidden VNC in it, which is really cool. So NB web, by the way, is it's a, a web server built into it. So you can connect to the screen with the web server, or sorry, a web browser, and look at what's on the screen or actually even operate it. The problem with that is it's a little slow. If you have VNC, it gives a lot better performance. And so it's not listed really in the brochure, but somehow we found that they recently added that functionality into the NB Ethernet model. So that's great. A bonus on this one is that the software is free or shareware. So from Omron's website, you can download the software and it's no charge, uh, especially if you're doing a multi-vendor application with it then you really don't need to pay for any Omron software. You download the free stuff, and then you use it with a third-party PLC. If we're using with an Omron PLC, it could be basically any PLC that Omron has from CP1 all the way up to CJ2. In the SysMac series, all you want to make sure is that you have an Ethernet port because SysMac is much better with Ethernet than with serial, and uh, you can combine those. So it's quite a popular thing to see an NX1P with an NBHMI. That's a pretty popular package. So here's the uh, part numbers and ordering information. Basically in the 357, you see there's a um, ethernet or a non-ethernet model. And when you get to the 10, they just give ethernet only. And here you can see um, some quick specs about it. Really the main thing to notice is the resolution. In the three and the five, the resolution is quite low. So I do use a fair bit of threes because the price on it is very low for an entry level small machine. Then I would jump over this one if I could and go to, because for a small amount of money, you get a lot more resolution. And then of course, it's just bonus if you can get a 10 inch uh, screen. So the NSs, 
So the NS has basically from five inch all the way to 15. There is an interesting oddball model called the NSH5. And this guy is basically like a robot, robot programmer uh, type terminal product, but it's an HMI that you can do whatever you want with. It is limited with the five inch resolution, like 320 by 240, but it's, it's got some interesting applications. And at one time, Omron's uh, top of the line model before SysMac was the NSJ. And this is a J series PLC or a CJ combined with an HMI all into one, which was their answer to Proface at the time, but they kind of moved away from this kind of uh, product off. So here's the main uh, NSs that we use um, between the five and the 12. As I said earlier, there is a 15, but it's a little bit uh, on the large side. Um, in the fives, just note that the monochrome and the STN have been discontinued. They only have TFT color. This is because the sub assemblies or, or display boards that need to go inside are obsolete technology. So this kind of goes to show this line that's been around a long time. And here's the part numbers for the NS family. Um, they also have ethernet and non ethernet models to save money. And really, it doesn't really, um, it's, it's becoming, you know, um, almost uh, all the time to go to ethernet for the small amount of money extra that it is, because uh, ethernet is just becoming so prevalent in the industry. So here are a few advanced features from the NS series. And it's interesting because if you look at some of these, you might not find it even in the NA, which is uh, technically our top of the line. And the reason is, is because this one has, has been developed over such a long period of time that they've uh, integrated a bunch of things into it. So quickly on the upper left, um, from the eight and up, you can put uh, a PicBridge printer on it. Uh, incidentally, these applications where we want to put a printer on the HMI, I find at least three quarters of the time that when people say they want to do this, they don't really want to do it. Because once they, you know, plug it in, it's in the factory and they have to put ink cartridge in there, it just doesn't work. And so what they want to do is actually SCADA, is to capture the data electronically and print inside the office. So this printer thing, even though uh, all of the screens we're talking about today offer printer connection. It's not something that really is uh, that important or works that well. Uh, something that does work well is the data logging. So I particularly like this one, um, the NS with the data logging. It is an older CF card, which is not so much fun, but um, the way that it was implemented is extremely user friendly and easy to do. So it's easy to show somebody or to uh, implement on site without uh, too much uh, time and research. It just uh, is done through a wizard and very easy to do. So basically as your process is running, there are not only uh, data that can go to the data log card, but there are things like alarms. There are things like uh, something called an operation log, which is basically which operator press which button at which time. All of this stuff can be stored in CSV files and then FTP'd from the uh, memory card to a PC, and then of course, uh, analyzed on the PC. So down here at the bottom and over to the right, we're showing a little about, a bit about this FTP thing. So the FTP is the file transfer protocol, and what we're doing is accessing the CF card in the screen without having to physically remove it, just going through the ethernet to get the files. So if we FTP to the IP of the screen and get the files, which again could be uh, data logging from production, could be alarms that we've logged, could be what the operator's been doing, and a bunch of other things. Um, what you really see this doing is going from the automation world, where all of the integers and Boolean things inside the screen go into the Microsoft world, because now they're in the PC. So this bridge between uh, Microsoft and automation is very well done through SCADA, but also done through high-end HMI features. So um, what we're looking at here is a uh, snapshot from what we call NSWeb. So 
in the NS series of screen, they don't support the VNC. They do support uh, a web browser or a web server. So this is called NS Web. And as a matter of fact, all you need to do is press one button in the system menu on the screen to enable it. And it must be an ethernet model with V2 um, in terms of its uh, time release or basically current product. But um, then what will happen is it will, whatever's on the screen will be broadcast for monitoring and you have an optional um, uh, operation mode. So in the operation mode, these uh, buttons that we see here, let's say for example, alarms, um, you don't have to press the button on the real HMI, you can press it on the uh, web browser and will actually activate the button. So again, that could be something that's dangerous, so you have to uh, keep an eye on what's going on with it, but it allows us to remotely operate or check on a screen, giving physical distance from another operator or convenience. Like, Sometimes people, um, owners of companies can have this on their phone or on their PC at home in the evening to make sure that their stuff's running uh, while the factory's chugging along. So you can do things like that with it. And this is a similar sort of thing, but this is talking about uh, what's called Sysmac, Review, Sysmac Remote HMI Viewer. This is an app that you can download for free. So if you go to your Apple store or if you have an Android, you can download this app for free provided by Omron. And when you do add on the app, it'll say, okay, you wanna add an HMI to monitor. It will ask you, is it an NA or an NS or an NV? So you pick whatever, put the IP, and then basically you can operate it or just monitor it on your smartphone. Kind of like the picture we had at the very beginning. But um, the thing is, if you're not doing that Wi-Fi hotspot that I talked about, then you're going to need IT to set this all up. So that's not a big deal, but it's just not normally as product tech support people or yourself. Normally, we need to get the IT people involved. So as a matter of fact, I had one hooked up in the Oakville uh, ProX laboratory. I had them uh, bring me a connection and give me an IP address, and then we could just log into this uh, NS8 screen and see it work. It's currently been removed from there, but uh, we, we demonstrated how to do it. Okay, so next up is the NA series. Again, this one belongs to the SysMac, and uh, it is the, the, the primary one that we're running with. So um, the things about it is it has uh, many more colors, 16 million colors, uh, comes in 7, 9, 12, and 15 inch, uh, higher resolution, um, the, the two smaller models share the same resolution and the two big ones share the same resolution. So if you do a project, you can convert it from anything to anything with inside the NAs. Um, actually, while we're on that topic, so basically anything in SysMac is, as you know, a new platform. So if we have screens from NBs before or NTs or NSs, we cannot convert to NA. We need to start from scratch. So that's kind of a a bit of a, a pain in the butt, but that's just the way that is. So we would use SysMac Studio to create this. Um, we're gonna see in a little bit though, it is quite um, user-friendly and easy to create the screens inside SysMac Studio once you have uh, your SysMac PLC programmed. So that's not such a big deal. So um, this picture here shows the connectivity for the NA. The NA has two Ethernet ports, um, and basically they're totally separate independent ports, kind of like we had on our NX102. So this is uh, really good. On the port one, we can put the PLC, we can even do uh, programming on port one at the same time with SysMac Studio. Um, the port two is, is, you can do whatever you want with it, but it's intended to connect up to a local area network inside a factory so that you can do programming across that. So this might be a 10.10 .10 address, and these here would be 192.168 addresses. Um, we use SD card, which is more modern than the Compact Flash, so that's good. Um, you can acquire them for a, a little uh, less money too than, than CF cards. Um, it also supports a mouse, USB stick, and keyboard. So the mouse and keyboard is something that's been asked for for a long time. And so we know we have it. Um, I haven't seen many customers take advantage of that, uh, just a couple, but you can do it. And um, 
you can also program the screen with USB. So it's the same cable that programs a CP1 or a CJ2 or an NJ uh, with USB. And it's um, just our NX1Ps and our N, uh, sorry, NX1P and NX1 that do not have USB ports on them anymore. So for ordering an NA, uh, here's basically what you got. They have, um, they're all with ethernet. They come in either a black bezel or a silver bezel. So I'm not sure what's up with the silver bezel because all the Almoron people I know really don't like it. So nobody ever orders it and it's just there. So maybe this is for another country that likes it. I don't know, but uh, we always order the one that ends with B. That's what we stock. And uh, it's got a black bezel. So um, there is a new version coming out, by the way. So this part number will have a dash V1 in it. I think it could be sometime this summer, uh, something like that. They've got some enhancements that they're putting in it, but I also understand that some of the sub-assemblies required to build these are becoming obsolete and not available, so they have to go through a hardware change. So they will all become V1s, but no real cause for alarm. Um, the programming won't be hugely different or any, it won't really affect us, and the programs can be transported from one to the other, uh, or so I'm told. So yeah, basically looking at the specs down here, you see the resolution is pretty good on the small ones and much better on the large units. And um, same kind of uh, lifetime uh, runtime for the screen compared to the other models. So here's an interesting thing. On the front, there are three function keys. And this, you would just put a Boolean tag to this key and do whatever you want with it in your ladder program. So why would they put those there? Well, the NS, if you look at them closely, you'll see there's a grid on the HMI. And this is basically where the touch switches must be. But on an NB or an NS that's more modern, sorry, NB or an NA that's more modern, if you create a uh, push button, you can do it down to the nth pixel for location. So you can put it anywhere you want. But with this technology comes that, a rule or a caveat that you cannot press two touch switches at once. So when you need a two fingered operation, you must press a function key and then one other finger press the touch screen. But you cannot press two things at once on a touch screen. So looking at the back, we have our two ethernet ports. We have a DC power that we apply to it. There is a reset switch in there in case you wanna reboot the unit. Um, interesting to note, there is a serial port, but it says for future expansion. Sorry. So this means that this serial port is not currently supported or does anything. Therefore, we have no multi-vendor connection. We must uh, use the Ethernet ports and we must talk to uh, an Almiron PLC. And we saw that a little earlier. They showed in the picture, I didn't mention it much, there was a, an NJ PLC there and a CJ2. So you can talk to a CJ2 because CJ2 supports tags, but I would not recommend that combination very highly. Basically, if you want to use an NA, you're going to use a SysMac uh, PLC, just for user friendliness and so on. So here we'll take a little, um, a small little um, venture into the programming. So from the last session, we also did a very, very brief look at the programming for a ladder logic to do a start stop circuit and a timer and a counter or something like this. Just a basic little thing to get our feet wet or to get um, familiar with the programming a little bit. So if you're in SysMac Studio and you have a PLC program, let's say from last week, you'll see this little icon here of the PLC. So that could be an NX102, NX1P, could be an NJ, doesn't really matter. Um, and we talked about this thing we have called the multi-view explorer. So this multi-view explorer is how we can access our IDEs or inv in embedded development environment. Meaning I can switch from PLC to HMI to safety controller to vision to other things all within inside the same software. So basically what we do is we right click on this PLC and select add device. Then when I do that, I'll have category, I'll have PLC here, I'll have all kinds of stuff. I will choose HMI. Then I will say, okay, I want an NA 
seven, nine, 12, 15, whichever model. And don't worry about this five, it just says NA5, the same thing as NA, just they have a random five in there. Then we ought to know our, the firmware version that's loaded in the screen, which we can easily find out, but not to worry. Pick that. So once you do that and hit OK, then you'll basically have this screen down here. And so what we're looking at here at the bottom of the screen is it's switched into HMI development for the NA inside Sysmex Studio. And it automatically knows that my host is an NX1 PPLC and his address is 192.168.250.1. How it knows that is because I started here and I right click and I added it into the project. So it just inherited all of the properties of that and knows already what the host is. So that's a very quick and user friendly setup. So next thing we need to do after that is basically just register the uh, tags. Uh, remember that the tags are shared within Sysmax Studio and that's the benefit or why this is um, supposed to be user friendly and save us time. So basically what we need to do then is what we call variable mapping. So in the tree we go to uh, variable mapping and then um, once we're in variable mapping we basically go to either system variables or user variable and then you right click them and do what's called create device variable. So when you do that, it will automatically assign these names here you see in the right to those tags. Now they're basically ready to use for HMI program. Um, by the way, these tags came from the PLC global variables. So anything in global variables will come in, in, in here into user variables. It will assign a name called new controller zero and then the tag that was in your global variable from the PLC. And you can obviously change that if you want. And after those few steps, you're basically ready to go. So ready to go means you're gonna go into page zero. Uh, they call them page instead of screen. You go over to your toolbar here. You, so let's say you want a momentary button or you want whatever kind of button, you click it, drag over to your left, and then you have your button. So pretty straightforward and easy. Um, it can get quite time consuming when you go put all your colors and all kinds of details and stuff in there. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is, so once you drag and drop an item over here and you double click it and look at the properties of it, you will see all kinds of things like the color, uh, the name of this button, all this stuff. None of that stuff is really that critical. It's just eye candy. But the main thing to, to keep an eye on when you're new to this is behavior. So behavior and then variable, this is important. And the reason it's red here is because if you do not provide a correct one, you will have an error. So I need to give a correct uh, tag that belongs to the NA. And if it's a new controller tag, it means it's linked to the PLC, which is most of the time what you're gonna wanna do. So I'm gonna, um, it does support type ahead uh, like we saw last week with the PLC. Um, I'm gonna look for a new controller zero start because I wanna have a start button. And with the type ahead, I'll find it. And once that is uh, filled in, then that button is, is good to go and can be used. So um, yeah, we haven't got time today to go through a whole uh, tutorial on programming the NA, but I've got a, a quick uh, Cole's notes for us here. So this shows again uh, about a button, but talking about more basic uh, objects that we have. So inside buttons, we have momentary, toggle, set, reset. We have lamps, uh, shapes, standard controls, gauges, HMI control. So this is the basic stuff, but on top of this, we're gonna have data logging and recipes and alarms, and we'll, and we'll look at that in just a sec. So for anything basic, you basically just drag and drop it on the screen. And again, the main thing is the behavior and the variable. That's everything. So once I get that correct, it doesn't really matter if the colors are wrong, this will actually work with the PLC. And um, it's the most important thing to be aware of. Now, uh, so this is the basic programming. Before I forget there, um, the NA has something above and beyond the other screens. The other screens have a bit of it, but it has a vb.net support, so you can do some really high-end fancy programming. Uh, you can even do subroutines 
and uh, run programs in the background of NA pages. So it uh, becomes quite powerful that way. Okay, so next we want to talk about alarms. So basically, um, you know, any HMI, even the NB, any decent alarm in any application, you normally want to have alarms. So in the SysMac Studio, in the environment we were just looking at, there's a separate little location for alarms. And you go in there and there's basically a folder and you just register them. So it'll ask you, uh, what is the name of the tag when the alarm occurs? Uh, is it rising edge or falling edge? Do you want a time and date stamp? Do you want a pop-up window like you see here? Or do you not want a pop-up window? And then you'll have this alarm strategy. Then this uh, big thing here and the one beneath, these are what we call alarm viewers. So you drag the alarm viewer on there. In the upper one, we have the property set to alarm viewer, which means only show alarms that are currently active and historical alarm viewer or sometimes called historian. This means if an alarm happened last midnight and someone in reset or acknowledge the alarm, it's still going to be there. So until you do a manual clearing out of these alarms, it can basically capture them for you uh, while you're away. So another high-end feature of the um, NAHMI is the trend graph. So the trend graph is also the key to data logging. So you have to have a trend graph and you can actually run this in the background or have it, it will be active, let's say, uh, when you're not looking at it. So if you have temperature or pressure or something that's going on in your process, you may be required to log that every half a second or every five minutes or whatever. And in some cases you wanna replace a chart recorder, which takes a lot of ink and are very old school. Um, what we do is we uh, log the data to C CSV files inside your SD card, and then that data can be FTP'd or it can be um, by other means or just removing the SD card temporarily can be uh, transferred over to a PC. So once you get the data in the PC, you can do fancy graphs, print it, do analysis on it, and figure out how to uh, optimize your uh, production. So recipe management, um, this also is another high-end feature of the HMI. And the idea is um, we can actually work with CSV files that were created in Excel. So if you're making uh, you know, uh, different uh, parts or different vehicles or something like this, you might have a huge uh, CSV file and the recipe will have all these ingredients and the ingredients ultimately go into variables or tags. So you might need like uh, one liter of water, five liters of cream, three liters of vegetables, whatever it is to make the uh, soup, for example, right? So the idea is the HMI handles all this data and takes that away from the ladder logic and the PLC, thereby making programming easier. So um, in the case of the NB, it actually does support recipes, but with some uh, some you know deep dives into projects I've done. We've abandoned the recipe manager that comes with it and made our own recipes, uh, like we used to in the 80s and 90s. But it's basically it's PLC ladder driven, and the HMI is just a, a window into the memory map uh, for that. But in this case, it's a higher end recipe manager, so uh, we can use it, and it even supports VB Script to manipulate these recipes. Uh, what we're showing here is something called an IAG or an intelligent uh, application gadget. So somebody in Omron has made these icons for me and I import them into my SysMac Studio um, as uh, an imported extra thing. Then when I'm in my toolbar, I see these IAG recipe. I just drag it onto my screen and I have this functionality. Okay, so uh, that ends that. Um, I guess it's coming near the end of the hour, so I won't be able to jump into SysMac Studio and go through a whole tutorial that I would really like to do. But before I forget, um, although we just covered in the programming some very, very basic stuff, we have for advanced stuff, we have application notes, we have sample code, we have uh, links to uh, YouTube videos, um, mainly done by Omron in their Quick Tip uh, series video 
uh, videos. And so they will show you how to do various uh, things in the NAHMI with SysMech Studio that are a little bit more involved. And through our tech support, uh, we can also help you on projects or get you information uh, if you have questions about certain features. So before we go to the uh, question and answer period, I'll just mention this. Um, so we have uh, proax.ca website and there's been a lot of uh, enhancements and things added to it. Uh, one of the most important things off the top to say is that if you were to go search for uh, an HMI from Omron on there, it will tell you if Proax has stock and it will also tell us the stock at uh, Omron Canada or what they can, how long are they, how many have they have in the shelf and how long we can uh, expect in, in order to get it. So um, the update uh, is done regularly for the uh, uh, inventory. Um, there's a blog with some of our experts on there. There's usually a person that's online chat willing to help you. Uh, we have a robotic cell configurator added on there recently. So um, there's lots of stuff to help you at proox.ca. So we would encourage you to visit that. Okay, so if anyone wants to unmute and jump in, uh, feel free and go ahead. I'm just going to go and try and find the um, the chat and see if we have any questions in there. So it looks to me like the chat is empty. So like I said, I encourage anybody to unmute and just jump in and fire away if you've got a question. Nobody there. Okay, well, let me see if I can show you something else. Okay, so. So we have here on the screen, if you're watching, um, this is just to skim through and quickly show you a quick start document about the NAHMI being added to the uh, NX1P and NX1. So basically it starts off uh, showing you how to do the PLC like we did last week. And so this is all old news. But then when you get done your ladder program, which is right around here, and you test it with the simulator, we then start doing the screen program for it. Which is after the analog there. So part two is adding an HMI uh, NA in SysMech Studio. So this shows you step by step how to add a, a NA HMI to your project, how to set up the variables that we talked about, how to create some basic buttons, and then basically how to interact with a ladder program and do a simulation. We are able to simulate the uh, NA with the, uh, the uh, PLC, the NX1P in this case at the same time. So you have no actual hardware, but you can simulate both the ladder and the PLC uh, working together. So in your simulator, it looks like this. You press the start button and you'll see this contact come on and then the actual rung will seal in. So very, very basic stuff, but just to illustrate how to get going and how to use the software. And here's an example of a little bit more advanced application with a servo and showing uh, the position of the servo and entering a target position for the servo to move to and some status, stuff like that. And finally, a whole bunch of uh, Omron quick, quick Tip video links. So this will bring you to more fancy stuff like to do with EtherCAT setup, uh, function blocks, some more advanced topics. So I think Kevin will send this document to you uh, at the tail end of this presentation, as well as brochures for all three of the uh, a series of HMIs that we talked about today. Do you know what I mean? Yep, yep, so exactly. that's correct. Um, exactly. So after this uh, meeting, I will and send everybody a thank you email with, um, a, with registration links for all of our upcoming trainings for this week and next week. Um, and any and also any additional resources uh, in regards to uh, this presentation as well will also be sent. Um, and then, um, yeah, other than that, if anybody have any questions, feel free to uh, write it in the chat or let me know. 
Um, you can, and if you have a oh, question um, that, if you can't think of a question right now and you do think of one later on, feel free to respond to my thank you email and um, we can get Steve to answer it for you. Um, but other than that, um, that's the end of our uh, webinar. If, um, like I said, um, the next one will be on Friday uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, and it's going to be on, uh, we're going to have a special guest from uh, Phoenix Contacts. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today on our webinar, and I hope you guys have a great day. Yes, thank you, everyone, for your time today. Have a good one.